So we said several times already in this course, not just in this book, but in other sections as well, that sea level is rising and we should worry about this and this is a great concern for the future. Coastal cities will disappear and so on. But you are right to ask the question, Grandpa, is it really rising everywhere? You may be thinking of a bathtub or a bucket where you keep pouring water, let's say from melting glaciers, or you heat it and it expands and you think it's rising everywhere, but that's not the case. So we'll see why that is. So some facts though are clear as far as climate change is concerned, even though we may not know for sure what is happening to hurricanes, let's say. Sea levels are rising, but again, this means globally averaged sea level is rising just like globally averaged temperature is rising or globally averaged water vapor in the atmosphere is rising and higher sea levels cause major flood damage especially when a storm comes in and sweeps all that extra water from the rising sea level into your town or your field and so on. So we have been measuring with tide gauges and you know wherever you go to a coastal city like Venice if you are lucky and maybe Mumbai or wherever there may be a tide gauge at a coastal station where people are looking at tides because that can affect the ships coming in or what uh, you want to do at the coast like fishing and so on and so forth. So this is again looking at change in sea level compared to a baseline of 1993 to 2008 average or a climatology and it is in millimeters so here is 100 millimeters so that's one centimeter and it is starting in 1880 and going through to about 2021 or so what is it doing if you compare to the baseline 1993 to 2008 you can choose any baseline it will just shift the anomalies or the deviations from the baseline a little bit but the message does not change so don't be confused by the baseline it is just a way to compare compute the anomalies or deviations from the baseline. So you can see just like temperature before about 1940s or 50s the global mean sea level was below the baseline and after that it jumped above the baseline and keeps increasing and increasing and increasing and of course just like temperature it has these ups and downs which means year to year sea level even averaged over all of the globe as a deviation from the mean of 1993 to 2008 changes because the ocean may get cooler one year warmer in another year glacier melting may slow down in one year and so on and so forth so you have this interannual variability but it is obvious just like CO2 in temperature that it keeps on increasing from decade to decade right so this is sea level rise so there is no doubt at all that sea level rise is real in a global mean which again just like temperature indicates that we are trapping more and more of the thermal energy that needs to go out to space for equilibrium or for preventing the continued warming of the planet but how do we think about this when we look want to look at the distribution of sea levels. Let's start with a cup of coffee which I took from this here. I think it's the for sale if you want on a higher resolution but hopefully I'm not stealing. So it's showing a cup of coffee with a little dip in the middle and rising on the side. So you can do this experiment. If coffee is not allowed for you then you just take a, a cup of water in a bowl or a cup and then you swirl it with a spoon and see you see even if you take out the spoon the water is swirling and it sinks in the middle and it rises at the outer edge and this is a dynamic sea level in the cup which means when there is circulation then sea level is not the same everywhere if you just kept the cup as it is and you keep pouring water it will start rising and then can flow over but if you put a spoon and start rotating then it gets 
these different levels of water within the cup as well so here is a bathtub which you can keep filling up and it will rise equally everywhere this one I took from Adobe stock again hopefully not stealing this is for education Adobe so please allow me okay and here are the points where sea level is changing and sorry glaciers I think this is the diameter uh, this is sorry uh, I should read carefully these are uh, from the Antarctic glacier side the diameter of the circle here shows the area covered the area covered by tide water glaciers as shown in blue so you have glacier and tide water glacier tide water glacier is basically you know where the glacier is flowing into the estuary or whatever where tides are coming in and going out but it doesn't matter the point is there are many places in Alaska in western US and Greenland and so on and in Himalayas uh, some mountains here also hold Andes and of course Antarctica and you can see the sizes of the glaciers all these glaciers can melt are they all melting well not at the same rate and some are actually not melting yet because they are still getting some snow this is also something you can think about if temperatures get warm and warm temperatures bring more water vapor into the atmosphere and you need the water vapor for producing precipitation not just rainfall precipitation which means snow can you also increase snow if you increase water vapor of course you can and there are places where warming is in fact increasing the snowfall and in some parts of Antarctica the southern ocean which is a channel as you remember is getting warmer increasing the water vapor in the atmosphere and putting some snow on Antarctica so some glaciers in Antarctica are not melting maybe even growing because of this so you have this kind of complex earth system feedbacks happening remember so if they start melting it will all release into the ocean so if you look at sea level trends so this is now not millimeters uh, this is millimeters per year so here we were looking at increases in millimeter compared to the baseline we didn't say per year if you are old enough then you know that if you make a tangent here and a slope that will give you the rate of increase which will be something like millimeters per year you may think it's tiny but remember it shows how much energy this is a large area if you increase one millimeter everywhere you need a humongous amount of energy to do that so the amount of energy needed is massive so don't be fooled by small amounts of sea level it is important okay so you can see in if you look at millimeters per year or in inches per year you have regions where the sea levels are rising fast like here in the Kuroshio region if you remember the uh, West Pacific and the Gulf Stream and uh, the regions here in the Antarctic Ocean which is complicated with increases decreases increases and decrease because the water is swirling around and so on and so forth and you also know enough now to say why is sea level not increasing here maybe even decreasing around the Galapagos in the eastern tropical Pacific but it is increasing here in the western Pacific we looked at the temperature maps early on in other sections not in this book I think in this book also we looked at it we have cold waters here because we have upwelling ha he happening here remember your northeasterly winds southeasterly winds are merging and they are pushing water from the east to the west which means Coriolis will push it to the right and to the north here and to the south and uh, to the left here which means water is moving away from the equator so cold water is coming up which means water density is higher sea level is lower whereas here it's warm temperatures and it is warming and expanding and so on okay so warming and expanding explains a lot of the uh, sea level rise but melting glaciers are also adding to this so this tells you that there are places where sea level can s drop and be negative trend p in millimeter per year there are places where it is rising and there are places where it may be 
getting colder and shrinking here in the uh, Mediterranean Black Sea and maybe this is the Caspian Sea or so that you can check and make sure okay so the main point is if you average all the sea levels across the world you get that increasing sea level that we saw that sea level is increasing when we average over the whole world but when we look at the map there are regions where it's rising and there are regions where it is not rising so we'll come back and look at a temperature trend just to be sure because I haven't shown it I will show it so that <coughs> we can see that the Arctic is warming more and faster and you will know why that is when we come to it because you have learned why Arctic should warm faster I will give you a clue the ice albedo feedback what's happening in the Arctic the ice albedo feedback think about it and we'll talk about it in the next podcast okay